Barton Spring, which is part of the Barton Springs complex. Of the four main springs, it's the only spring that doesn't have a bunch of concrete or masonry around it. All the other springs have been impounded. Eliza Spring has that Eliza Spring Amphitheater. Of course, Barton Springs Pool has the dam that makes the pool. And then Sunken Gardens also has a walled structure around it. So this is the shallowest site. It's not perennial. The other sites always flow. This site stops flowing when the combined discharge of the system goes below 40 cubic feet per second. So we have stretches of time for you know months where this is dry and not flowing. The salamanders have two options. They can stay at the surface and die, or they can follow the water table as it recedes back into the aquifer. We'll see them you know, a year later, two years later in some cases, come back up at the spring. Yeah, so we're just searching for salamanders in the cobble. Um, this view box helps, helps cut the surface tension, so you can see right into the main outflow. And then we just gently turn over the rocks. So what's the strategy oh, to one. try to... You got one. Well, I gotta catch it. Eurysius Asorum, Barton Spring Salamander. Um, and we just try to, you know, they're very sensitive to temperature change. So this is, you know, constantly 72 degrees. So we keep them in the water. Um, I'll set up what we call a party box over there. That's a full grown adult. They're notoriously hard to photograph. They have really intricate patterns on their heads. Well, and their whole body, really. And uh, they stay fairly stable over time. So use that to match them. So after we do this work, there's a lot of work that needs to be done at the computer as well. At this point, we probably have four or five thousand photos in a database. Most of them aren't from this site. But we can test to see if we've recaptured them before by using software that helps us identify individuals with the same pattern. We run all of our photographs through a program called Wild ID, and um, it matches uh, images for us. And so it's actually based on a program that was designed for matching giraffes. And we just um, zoom in on their heads, and we can actually match individuals based on their spots on the head. I also think it's really neat that they have these regenerative properties so they can regrow their limbs, so legs or tails, um, if they lose them. So that's a pretty uh, cool thing that salamanders have. In her belly, by her back legs, those are eggs. We call that gravid. The second one here, or, you see that one's also gravid, eggs in the side. So when we put them in these trays, We'll, we'll hold them up to the light, oh, yeah, yeah. So, look at their underside, okay. see if they have eggs or not. That's part of the data we record. Matt, we're ready to release these. Okay, you're good. So, do you put them back where you found them? Or? Well, I was going to ask you, are you going to put one down there? Or are you I don't just going to put like, them all four over? Just put them all down there. That's where the good habitat yeah. is. Yeah. Right about there. Yeah, frequently when we come to the site four times a week, we'll see people playing in the springs or getting drinking water, and they're compacting the soil and potentially stepping on salamanders in the process. So we do ask that people stay out of the water here and enjoy it downstream where it's still flowing. I think they're interesting and they're fascinating and they're unique. To me, they're like the mascot to Barton Springs. People love coming to this place, but 
what's the most unique and special thing about this place? It's not the fact that humans thought it would be cool to put a dam across a creek and block up a spring to swim in it. It's that we have species that live here that have evolved here over millions of years and live nowhere else on the planet. That to me is, is worth preserving.